just have to look at the schedule. Good morning to everyone online. I'm happy to see you here and the faces here in the room. And um, I want to bring to you today a peace practice, and I'm not even going to go into the details of why. Anyone with news, with CNN, anyone with a newspaper, anyone watching the primary newscast, there's a thousand reasons. And so one of the things that I have always felt strongly about in my community, in this community, is that we do everything we can to be part of the solution. Amen. And being part of the solution is about, and it's perfect that this is, month is all about the shadow because our, our world lives inside of us. It's never outside. And so for each one of us to bring a consciousness and a sense of peace and heart, wherever we go, starting here, going to family, neighbors, community, at work, so that wherever you walk, you are literally walking in the consciousness and the behavior of one who carries peace and love and acceptance and forgiveness. And so I'd like to invite you to practice a little Honoponopono with me today. Um, most of you know what that is, and it is just quickly, it's a Hawaiian prayer, thousands of years old, used to heal the consciousness of something. But I wanna bring to you something that, uh, if you've been in my forgiveness course, you'll recognize. I wanna bring to you, and I've done it here also, um, I wanna bring to you the sign language for it so we have movement while we're saying it. We, no, I'm gonna change, I was gonna say we must, but you don't have to do anything. My hope and dream though, as always, is that you want to be part of the solution. That's my hope and dream, is that you want to be part of the healing of this planet, whether it's you know just one person that you leave happier, more whole, easier, something. And for e if each one brings one to the state of peace, we've done our job, and then we keep multiplying it that way. So if you will um, join me, the, the words for the Honoponopono are, I'm sorry, Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And I'm not going to give any more explanation than that at this moment. Bless you. But I invite you to join me. And if you watch, you'll see the hand signals. And so bring to mind basically peace on the planet. Peace in your home. Peace in this country. Peace between races. Peace between political parties. Peace for those who are, feel so easily threatened by us being us. Because when, when you are an individual who's a little different, a, you walk a slightly different path, I can't say I really understand it, but I know we are a threat, even just being unique. Mm -hmm. We could be a threat to, the, to humanity. So let us go inside, if you will. Find a place within you where you have never been hurt, harmed, or injured in any way. And from that place of power, join me in this practice. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. And then just keep going with it. <clears throat> I 
let us take this practice deep within ourselves and know that wherever one goes, so goes all. There is no private good. There is no private healing. When any one of us heals, we affect the whole. Let us feel into the empowerment that these words provide. And I'm grateful, so grateful for your practice. And let's close with our normal prayer practice, peace practice. I am the peace I wish to see. I am the peace I wish to see. I know this peace for my family. I know this peace for my family. I know this peace for my community. I know this peace for my community. My community knows this peace for the world. My community knows this peace for the world. Thank you.
why you have to just loosen up. <laughs> Repeat after me, please. I love my shadow. I love my shadow. Yes. 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 This month in CSL, in the global themes, the month is celebrating or discussing the shadow. And to me, it, it is a very important, it is a very important conversation. And I want to try to make sense of it for you here today. And why here in the spiritual community are we talking about this psychological phenomenon? Because, you know, we're, 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 a, we're a spiritual center. So, there, but there is good reason. So first I want to start with how does our shadow get created and bear with me, I have no psychological training except for I am human and I know by means of my humanity how it is I got to the state that I've gotten. Mm. And it's very simple. Some of us here have had wonderful, wonderful childhoods where nothing went wrong. <laughs> Some of us, maybe, but if that were true, there wouldn't be such, it wouldn't be professions for therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists and, and coaches and everything else. Most of us experience something. Most of us. Not all. I mean, the truth is, not all. I have met a couple people in my life that didn't have something that seemed shocking or hard to them. But for the rest of you, you're on the my team. <laughs> there's the, un, un, the uh, undamaged team and then there's my team. And so and we, get, we get these things to different degrees. And so what happens is something happens, just something. A great example would be if, if your parents divorced and that really left you in pain. And it's a great example because the, the percentages today are so high in the favor of divorce that happens on a regular basis. Now, divorce itself is not enough to send you into anything. It's what you made of it. And the book that we're studying right now in our Monday book study, and there is still room, we're only going until the end of June, but there's room both in the daytime and the evening, which is at my house, and you get dinner, I'm just saying. So if anybody wants to still join that book study, you are welcome. I just want to put that out there because it's a powerful conversation. We've gone deep with our own personal stuff. So, so what happens is you make that mean something and most of us means, oh, I wasn't good enough, so my parents split up. I did something wrong, so my parents split. It's not logical, but it's what happens. And then once we make up that story, so something happens and we make up the story, and then what happens, we keep going on in life, and then we don't quite pay attention to the fact that we made this up. We just go ahead and we try to function on top of it. And that's what we do with a lot of things. So we, all of, most of us have piles of stuff that we are seeking to function on top of. And so we don't really know this and we go ahead, but now it is something that has created, it's, it's found a home inside of us. It's found a home inside of our psyche, in our subconscious, and depending upon the level of the pain and the trauma, it's possibly found its way into the cells of your body. Everything comes from somewhere. I just want to keep saying that. So what happens is when we, as we mature, all this activity has already happened, but we're not tracking that. What, is, what happens is we think we just don't happen to like that kind of person. So we avoid because now we've projected that out. Or we marry somebody because everything's good when you just get married, you're in a relationship, and sweet. And then all of a sudden the other stuff comes up and you're wondering, how did I miss this? And you might be thinking it's wrong, but in truth, every shadow has within it a gift. Every shadow is a gift. Say that. Every shadow is a gift. I need you to leave here believing that. 
because they know that when I first, you know, it was Carl Jung that started this whole idea about the shadow, and then Debbie Ford really made it, you know, brought it to the public view in her book, uh, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. But you hear that name? The dark side of the light chasers. What does that imply? It implies darkness, it implies evil, it implies hard, it implies that it's wrong. And I think she did great work. I am, this is by no means a criticism of her work, but the fact remains, I know when I started it, I was looking for what was wrong with me. That was the, that was the message that I got, what's wrong with me? Now, with all the, anybody who's a practitioner with me, you know I've encouraged shadow work and forgiveness work for 21 years. But I also asked everyone who was doing this to please don't do it alone. Because if you start to peel off the scabs or scrape off the scabs and you're not in a loving, um, you know, either in a small group or with prayer partners or something, it could be quite painful, at least the way it was done with the book. Because I know some, <laughs> there were some things that I discovered and I was like, oh my God. And I didn't have the, I didn't necessarily at the time have a loving community to lean into. So, so this is what's happened. So we, trauma happens, upset happens. We make a thing of it, we label it. We call it bad, we call it wrong and then we, we subscribe to it, and now it's a thing. And we don't know it's a thing, and the way what happens is, all of a sudden someone shows up in our life and we're like, what is wrong with that person? We think it's there, and that's the error. That's the error. And I have done everything I can in every class I've ever taught and every Sunday I've ever been to not believe that, to not believe it's outside. Because you and I can't heal or evolve above anything we think is outside of ourselves. The evolution must be internal. Peter Pan was miserable because he lost his shadow. We cannot be whole without our shadow. So the, the thing that I want to encourage is that we look at it with enthusiasm and interest and recognize, hmm, if that person is inciting in me this feeling, there must be something I need to know. There must be something that a gift so some of you, anybody having relationships, trouble maybe in either personally or professionally? Like just some things that are irking you, okay? It's not somebody else. I need to say that over and 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 over again. Now that doesn't mean it's you. I'm not trying to say you're the problem. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying there is a seed living inside of you and it is seeking to grow because it wanted to be healed a long time ago and when it didn't, it kept changing different forms. And what's that movie with Denzel Washington? And then it kept jumping personalities. Anybody know the movie? Fallen. What? Fallen. Fallen. Fallen, you're right. So in the movie Fallen, this, e but in there, it was an evil presence. This evil presence kept jumping bodies. Well, the truth is that's what happens when we don't recognize it's us. It, it might show up as Marilyn, and then it shows up as Cindy, and then it might show up as Neil. And until the day I stop looking outside, I'm going to be confused and think that you're out to get me. Are we laughing? <laughs> So here's, here's the good news. You and I are perfectly positioned because of the science of mind to use prayer, to use our sense of self to embrace the entire, all the facets of the shadow. We can do this by acknowledging it, naming it, not fearing it, looking at it with interest and going, hmm, if I'm rejecting Rocky over here, what parts of me am I rejecting? 
that I'm putting upon him. Because here's the thing, the presence of the intelligence of the one needs you to say yes. And when we're distracted and we're in pain and we're feeling discouraged or we're feeling um, disempowered, spirit has less access through us. But when we do the work, and it could be gentle, it could be as simple as you saying to it, and I encourage this, shadow, show me. Say that. Shadow. 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 Show me. Show me. Show me. Shadow, reveal to me. Go ahead. Shadow, Shadow. Reveal, reveal to me with a sense, a real sense of I want to see. And then shadow, grow me. Shadow, grow me. So shadow, show me. Shadow, reveal to me. Shadow, grow me. And with every, with every piece that you see, as you in, reincorporate it into your being, spirit suddenly has greater access to the wholeness of who you are. If there's something that you're not demonstrating in your life, sometimes it, we feel like, uh, and I hear people say, oh, I don't know how to pray right, or I don't know how to use the words. It's not in the words. It's in your receptivity. And if we're preoccupied by pain and suffering and relationships, we're less available to, to receive our good. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that, is that creating some logic? Mm -hmm. So what, what, we are, what we are seeking to do is to love the all of us. Because when I love the all of me, I'm more available to you. I'm not available to you if I'm not loving me. Right? It's so simple and so hard. It's so simple and so hard. It's a simple process, but it's difficult because it, we catch ourselves being consistently distracted. Because it, it, when it's out there, it could be, you know, really yummy. It could be really yummy. It's fun sometimes to be pissed off. <laughs> right? Anybody enjoy that fate feeling sometimes? Right? I just love being pissed off sometimes. I love it when I give myself the right to just, you know, rag on about something. I don't give myself a lot of, lot of time with that. I, I keep it short and I don't do it often because I've also lost my taste for it. So I enjoy it, but in teeny little bits, like a little shot of tequila instead of a whole glass. A little shot. But the beautiful, here's the beautiful thing. You and I have within us this vast, vast inner landscape of resources. And I, I just want for you not to be distracted by the pain and the stories, because this exists, this is real. Your power, your presence, your love, the, the, your, your, we actually, <laughs> we actually have within us everything that's required to physically completely heal. We have it all. You have all the guidance system, the sense of direction, all of it exists here. You were not, you might not have been born with a, with a manual, but the manual is truly exists. But if we're distracted, we're not, we're not taking it on. We need, and God knows, and this is where I, I could become a tiny bit, you know, a tiny bit preachy, because I'm, you know, there are a lot of, there are people amongst you, anybody have a really easy time talking to perfect strangers? Some of you have easy time with that? Yeah. Why, you, why is your hand not raised? Okay. <laughs> Some of you have a really easy time talking to perfect strangers. And I've watched it. I watch it with Bill. I watch it with Neil. You know, before you know it, like a half hour in, they're at a party. They've just met someone. And I'll say, do you know that person? No. It's like, oh. But I've never quite had that. Believe it or not, 
I'm shy. I'm not quite shy, but I'm introverted. So unless you throw me a hook, I, I don't really, I'm not in your business, you know, at least in a public way. I only go like vampires where invited. <laughs> so what happened though the other day, I was listening to these, these two moms. We were, I was at the park with my granddaughter. So much fun, oh my God. And I'm at the park and I see, he listened to these moms discussing that they can't get their kids to go to sleep and the fervor method, method right, fervor, is that what they call it? There's these different methods of getting your children to sleep and, and they're, you know, they're, I could hear they're upset and I couldn't, I was compelled, I pulled out my phone, I pulled out a picture of the myth of normal, which we're studying and I said, I hate to break in, but I gotta tell you, you know. Now I did, I think I did it pretty awkwardly to be honest with you. You know, so I think one of them would have done it much smoother. But right, huh? But I did it. Sitting next to you on a public bus, on a train, in a park, at a party, is someone who doesn't have what you have. Who's someone who doesn't have the logic you have. There's someone who hasn't learned how to put those pieces together and they are distracted. So for me, you know, last week with the song that Ty sang for us, which was again, thank you, and the opening line of the song and a, a line I used in last week's talk is I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, but I'm sick and tired of watching the world in pain. Now I can't do something about the eight billion people on the planet, but I could do something to leave a mark somewhere. I can do that. And so can you. But it's difficult if we think we want to fix somebody. But it's perfect if you're just healing and revealing your truest essence. So that when you approach somebody, you approach them with this like healing salve of your wholeness. You can't be whole without embracing your shadow. Your shadow has within it pockets of power. Pockets of power. That's the truth. That power, that power can be used to manifest, it could be used to heal, it could be used to be creative, but it's right there, it's kind of encased in the shadows. And every time we say, show me, reveal to me, grow me, instead of being afraid of it, instead of rejecting it, instead of avoiding it, we invite it in. We must invite in our shadow. Your Brian's treatment this morning was beautiful, the way he laid that out for us. Am I clear, it, 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 you know? So as a spiritual community, in order to even allow more of the presence of the intelligence of the one, we have to get our distraction out of the way. And our pain and suffering is the distraction. And your opinions. If you, you think to yourself, I'm not really distracted. Well, if you're walking around with a lot of strong opinions and judgments, guess what? It's part of your shadow. But be gentle. Be gentle, be loving, because the, our mind wants nothing more than be, to be accessed. Our mind is our, is our pathway to spirit. And so when we clear up the distractions, oh my God, we have this glorious and amazing, um, we open to the amazing resources of everything that's available. That's what we're here to do. And I think that's because we're in a community together, we're, we're of like mind, you know, we rub, you know, you rub shoulders with similar people, you might not realize how much you have and how much this teaching supports your brilliance. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. So, I hope that I've made sense of why we're doing this. And of course, I'll do more of it, and Joel will bring more of it, and so will Tony throughout the month. That we're going to bring alive the conversation of the shadow. And this is my hope and dream for you that by the end of the month, you're like, bring it on! Bring
bring it on, Shadow, bring it on, because you know that with every piece of it, you grow and become more of you. So let's, let's go into prayer with this, and I invite you, if you're willing, to hold hands with somebody and connect, because the vibration of healing, the vibration of good, the vibration of love, oh, when you touch another, and actually, just turn to someone right now, real quick, don't get up. Just turn to someone and say, I see you. And feel into that. Because it's your I am that is seeing. It is your I am that is the I am of each of us which is the glorious I am that is, the I am of the perfect prayer. Let us, and Al, if you're online, you could just chat, put that in the chat, and just say to somebody, I see you. Mm. There is a sweetness moving through us right now. It is the love of this community, the love of the presence, the love of the one. Let us with a full heart and a total willingness reach out and say, show me, grow me, show me, grow me, reveal to me all that is in living in my inner landscape. Spirit, Show me the path. Let me be revealed. Let me be evolved. Let me bring to this planet the full me, the unexpressed of me. Let me stop playing small and fearful. Oh, let me be bold and brilliant and beautiful in every way that I can, in every possible way that I can. Let this be my reality. Let this be the reality of everyone who is listening and everyone who hears this at a later time. Let us remain open, beautifully available, wondrously curious about the fantastical way in which life comes to our doorstep if we allow it and accept it. So I repeat one last time, shadow, show me. Shadow, reveal to me. Shadow, grow me. And in my yes, I make a covenant to be the fullness of my being. I'm so grateful, so powerfully grateful. And I let this word be so. And so it is. Thank you. <laughs>